Hey guys, Griffin here. Will we see a complete collapse of stable coins as a medium of exchange in cryptocurrency in the next 12 months? With Terra Luna's recent collapse, as well as Tether's current price instability and just shady history, uh, I think that there's a very good chance that this could occur. And there are a couple of reasons why this might actually occur in the next 12 months. First up is the Fed promoting their new US dollar backed stable coin. And so with this having the full backing of the Federal Reserve, as well as several major banks, uh, and they each have their own independent cryptocurrency divisions that are working on this and back testing and making sure that this code is essentially foolproof, plus the current surveillance state that we have in the United States, uh, I think there's a really big chance that this goes through uh, sooner rather than later and that we see mass adoption take place for this in the form of maybe some kind of plan to to actually roll it out and incentivize introduction of it uh, or just you know a, a gradual rollout as as more uh, as more shops and, and businesses adopt this method as as a form of payment um, then people will be more inclined to use it for a convenience factor right and so this US dollar stablecoin or cryptocurrency asset uh, will eventually become potentially a pretty popular method of exchange just in regular day-to-day -day life, which currently US stable or USDC, uh, Tether, those kind of stable coins don't really have that mass adoption. Uh, they're fairly limited in scope and they are used primarily for getting assets like US dollars or local mediums of exchange into cryptocurrency that you can then use to exchange for Ethereum, Bitcoin, uh, etc. So really they act like a bridge for the actual cryptocurrency markets because they're highly stable or instable, <laughs> excuse me, they're highly unstable. And so you want your money in something that is stable, like a stable coin. And so that kind of draw for allowing you to have either a portion of your money that is not going to necessarily be affected by volatility as well as something that you can make sure that you can transfer your us dollars into and then have a stable asset that you can then purchase ethereum or some of these other cryptocurrencies when they're down or at maybe a week later without having to worry about price depreciation on your assets if you're looking to purchase something at a fixed price then this is a really good way to do that. And it's really the only way to do that currently. But once the Federal Reserve publishes this US dollar stable coin, uh, what real incentives are there to use any of the other stable coins that currently exist? And that's really the thesis of this video is uh, that the US dollar stable coin will overtake every single other stable coin and make them irrelevant, regardless of whether or not they actually survive the upcoming bear market, which I have my doubts on, uh, especially Tether. I don't think that they have what it takes on, on several levels. Uh, they're extremely shady company, like with, with weird dealings and goings on. They probably don't have all of the money that they say that they have for backing. And I would imagine that a lot of their backing is, are in illiquid assets or bad debt. And so if there is a run on Tether that they can't accommodate for, uh, be it for more fear in the market or fallout from the FTX drama that we've seen fold out over the past couple of weeks, then I could see Tether collapsing as well. Um, and that would be a huge blow to the cryptocurrency markets because Tether is one of the main ways that users are onboarded to crypto right now through Binance. And so that, that collapse would be really damning in and of itself. But with the rollout of the USD stablecoin, I really see no reason for anyone to pick up a stable coin other than that ever. And I think that the main reason we're seeing people using stable coins other than as a medium of exchange to get to crypto are that we're seeing users do what's called yield farming and so they're taking their stable coins and staking them on centralized exchanges or other platforms that provide yield by lending out your money and 
within the last few months, we've really seen that backfire on people. Uh, <laughs> all the bankruptcies have meant that this, this money has been lent out and lost, and then they weren't able to repay the borrowers that, uh, that had lent their money into the system. And so you're, you're adding some risk for a relatively low return uh, based on where the treasuries are at currently. So we're, we're sitting at almost 4.5% on U.S. treasuries why would you go get 4% with USDC uh, on, on some place like uh, Coinbase or Binance? You know, there's really no point in that. Uh, it's, it's unnecessary risk. And I imagine that you'll be able to get similar uh, incentives with the Federal Reserve back coin. But even if you aren't, um, you, you could just invest in bonds and, and skip the stable coins. So really the, the only draw for stable coins would have to be that they provide a higher rate of return than what you could get from something like the U.S. bond market. And some places we're starting to see that, like on Binance, for example, I think you can get 8% for several stable coins now. Um, it really depends on, again, how risky the asset is. And as that treasury uh, rate increases, it's going to be harder and harder for these stable coins to provide that rate of return that they're, the customers are looking for. And it's not sustainable. Uh, if you have to give out an 8% year over year return for just lending out your money, then that means you have to take some really risky trades in order to ensure that you're going to get that return to give to your customers. Or you have to be getting a whole bunch of money very quickly and that can rapidly devolve into a pyramid scheme and, and backfire on you, right? So because these stable coins are pegged to the dollar, it makes it really difficult for them to price appreciate and uh, you know get rid of these problems that they're having with giving out high yields uh, or print more coins and then price appreciate in order to give out these yields because if, eventually if the money stops coming in, they're not they're not going to be able to repay their borrowers if they if they try to pull out their funds. And we've seen this play out at places like uh, Voyager in, in the last six months. And so I really don't think that this is a sustainable model for what is supposed to be a stable currency. And really the only way that this exists uh, in, in a vacuum is through something like a government where they can back it with military force and print money in order to secure it on the blockchain. And so, this, this idea of stable coins, I always thought was convoluted. I never really understood why anyone would want to put their money in something that they have no transparency into and that they're just saying is backed by what they say it's backed by. Uh, these companies that are putting out stable coins are not necessarily trustworthy in any way, in my opinion, and we're not really seeing good incentives to justify that risk. And so with the upcoming changes uh, and, and potential bankruptcies, as well as the Fed coin, I just don't really see a reason for stable coins to be alive in the next 12 months. I think you're going to see the, the decline of many of these stable coins, potential bankruptcies for these. And then once the Fed coin comes around, that'll be the real nail in the coffin for, for what we have currently available. So I hope you learned something today. That's all I have for you. Uh, if you appreciated this video, please leave a like and uh, comment below if you uh, have some dissenting opinions or you'd like to t discuss this with me further. But I appreciate you and I hope you had a great day. Thanks.